A lot of people want to get into mirrorless and they want to spend as little as possible. So we've got the two least expensive full frame mirrorless cameras. So I have the Canon RP and with the kit lens, it's $1,800. Mine's basically the same price. It's $2,100. It's a little bit more, but you get a lot more. Oh. If you want to get a lot more for your money, you should go to this link at KEH where you can get used gear. Use cameras, use lenses, tripods, bags, just about anything you can imagine. And if you're upgrading to mirrorless from a DSLR, maybe you can sell your old gear to KEH. They make it super simple and completely risk free. Thanks for sponsoring us, KEH. What about the Sony a7 II, which is full frame mirrorless you can get for like 900 bucks? It came out in 2015, so it's about five years older than these cameras, so we're gonna leave it out of this video. I think as long as I'm dressed like some sort of yachting tourist from Long Island, yeah. we should go to their favorite spot, Mystic, Connecticut. <laughs> This is uh, Mystic Pizza, where the famous movie was not filmed. You really believe this 30-year-old guy is gonna leave his wife and live happily ever after with you? You're living in a romance novel. It was actually filmed on the Stonington Borough, which is close to here. Anyway, today we're playing tourist here, and we're gonna be taking test pictures, and first we're testing the image quality. So we're gonna be shooting at the short end of our lenses, 24 millimeters for me, and the long end, 240 millimeters, to see which lens is better. I have only 200 millimeters, but my camera is so much better, it's probably gonna look better anyway. The confidence, the confidence. At the wide angle, the Canon RP with its lens was noticeably sharper than the Nikon. Both photos are raw and processed with the same settings. At the long end, the Canon RP won the pepperoni test by an even bigger margin. Look how sharp that pepperoni is. So you're a tourist and you take some pictures you really like. What happens when your memory card fails? Because look at me, I have two memory card slots. It gets you an instant backup so you don't lose your important memories. What about you? Is that what the extra $300 is spent on? Yeah, that's one of the many things. Um, I don't know. You have one card slot, I know. I win, <laughs> point Tony. You wanna see how close you can focus? Uh, sure. I got closer zoomed all the way in. Looks the same. I think I'm closer. Yeah, it's a negligible difference. That's what you always say when you lose. Okay, our next test is going to be dynamic range, and that's the ability to recover information and the deepest shadows and also the brightest highlights. It's a really useful feature, uh, but we're gonna have to do a pretty boring test. So Tony, I wanna get like the sky in there, this building, some of this dark building, and then we'll be able to see which one has better dynamic range. It's, it's gonna be the Nikon. Nikon always beats Canon for dynamic range. Okay. Zooming in, we can see the Canon still shows significantly more sharpness, especially on the high contrast edges where the Nikon begins to fall apart. Let's raise the exposure for stops so we can peek into the recovered shadows. These recovered shadows really show how much better the dynamic range is on the Nikon. Next, we're going to test the accuracy of the face and eye autofocus. So I'll take some portraits of Tony in front of the beautiful Mystic Seaport and we'll see how it works. Can I be in the photo with my best friend? Oh, looking good. Hold on one second. I'm going to try it at 240 millimeters. Get that bokeh. Yeah. I've got to get really far away. You 
look so nautical. I dressed appropriately. Yeah, you really planned. I planned too. I wore some high heels so that I wasn't shooting up at you as much. You probably could have put another six inches on those heels. Yeah, probably. Oh, this looks really good actually. <laughs> so I'm shooting with Tony's camera now, the Nikon, and it looks good and it seems to be focusing better too, so. Oh, like the viewfinder is better? Yeah, I mean, I know it's supposed to be a competition, but I, I just have to be honest with you. The skin tones on both look great, but the Nikon has a little bit better exposure for my face. I think the Canon's about two thirds of a stop underexposed. That's easy to correct in post, especially if you shoot raw. Zooming in again, we see the Canon lens is much sharper. So my Nikon, newer, better. The autofocus was a little snappier. I could switch between the two eyes in case it didn't focus on the right one. I win. Yeah, I have to admit that his did feel better, but I don't think the difference was so huge that you couldn't get pictures with this camera that this one gets. This is still good. That's a little better. Yeah, for a thousand bucks, it's actually pretty amazing. But if you wanted to do some professional photography or wedding photography, again, my two card slots here is going to make this like so much more useful. So you could actually turn around and make some money with this. Mine's $300 less expensive. Do you have a fully articulating flip screen like this? I have a, a tilt screen and I'm not a huge narcissist, so I don't always need to be taking pictures of myself. You were just, I can't believe you weren't gonna bring that up. Okay, mine has the flip screen, so if you want to take videos of yourself or compose a picture of yourself in a photo, you can see it, so that's definitely a benefit. I'll say we actually use those as our vlogging cameras because you can see yourself. Yeah. This one, you, you just can't see yourself. What about usability and like the feel of the camera? I think the Nikon feels better, and here's the thing. I have a back dial and I have a front dial, and my off on switch is in the right place. Because right another point for me, your battery life is terrible. So you need to turn the camera off every single time you finish using it, but it takes, you have to use your other hand. And what are you gonna be? Two oh, hands no. McGee, all you oh. and two. No, I can do it all with one <laughs> finger like that. Every time I pick it up, I flip it to on, okay. it's instantly ready. How much battery life do you have left? Full. Seriously? Yeah, look. What do you have? I have half a battery now. <laughs> yeah, you're and halfway done. And we started done. with full batteries. Okay, our next test, we're gonna be walking down this dock and taking photos of one another to see which camera handles autofocusing with movement better. And so you might run into this type of situation uh, with some sports or something like that. It's not too extreme, but we'll get a good idea of which one has a better autofocus. Yeah. The Nikon Z5 achieved the rated 4.5 frames per second with a 92% accuracy. Very good. The Canon only got four real world frames per second with an 83% accuracy. So not quite as good as the Nikon. So you got a fresh battery. You want to see who makes the better video? Sure. And I think we should also um, add in video usability because I do have the fully articulating flip screen. I and think we helpful. should also add in 4K video. Uh, did you put yours in 4K mode? I don't need 4K. You don't need 4K. And I also don't have 4K. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, I have 4K, but full disclosure, it has like a pretty heavy crop, okay. which means I'm gonna lose wide angle. If you wanna do wide angle, you have to switch back to HD. But for things like telephoto work, it's really nice. So, boat or something you wanna sure. video? Yeah. For our away subjects, the Nikon's 4K video and crop offer vastly more detail. Shooting in 1080 at 60 frames per second and slowing to half speed, both cameras tracked autofocus perfectly. The Nikon was over sharpened and the Canon had better skin tones, so the Canon definitely looks better. The Canon RP's video quality was good enough for most people's purposes. 
The Nikon Z5's 4K definitely looks sharper. So the Nikon is definitely capable of producing more detailed video since it could do 4K, but then you have to switch it back to HD when you want to go wide, so you're kind of switching back and forth. The Nikon has two card slots, but it doesn't use them both for video, just for stills. And yours does eye detect while recording video. This one did face detect, but this is probably a draw for that. But I really, I think I have to give you the win because you have that flip screen. And if you do want to do video at some point, you probably want to record yourself, right? It's a practical feature. I think this one is more usable, and I really mean it when I say I don't use 4K all the time, so I don't mind when. A lot of people want to get low light photos, but they don't want them to look like garbage. So it's important to be able to use a slower shutter speed. And these cameras have stabilization systems built into them. The Canon has stabilization in the lens, whereas the Nikon has it in both the body and the lens. So I'm going to use what I call the rule of doubles. We have a video on that to see which of these can uh, handhold at longer shutter speeds reliably. They both had excellent stabilization to about five stops below the reciprocal rule, but the Canon did about two and a half stops better than the Nikon when we went even longer, getting some sharp shots at half a second and 200 millimeters. Pretty remarkable. All right, so we've taken these through a number of tests. Which is the better option? Well, regardless of which one you choose, if you're ready to move up to mirrorless, I recommend checking out KEH because they have incredible prices on used camera gear. And if you use our coupon in the description down below, you can get 5% off. If you decide to sell your gear to KEH, you can get a 5% bonus towards your quote. They have a 180 day warranty and you have 21 days to return your gear for any reason so you can know that you're gonna be happy with your KEH gear no matter what. So let's talk about what's gonna happen here. Yeah, first let me say, when we reviewed the first Canon and Nikon full frame mirrorless cameras, we gave them both like pretty much a thumbs down, but they've both really improved the software. These are good, solid cameras. If you're thinking about going to a mirrorless, like we can officially say, like these cameras at this price point are good all around cameras that almost anybody can be happy with. I did see how the Nikon had features that I liked better. Yeah, if you're a professional shooter, if you wanna make money, this has the two card slots. And to me, if you're, somebody's paying you, you definitely need to have an instant backup. But if you wanna take video, this has the fully articulating screen so that you can film yourself. It also means you can more easily take photos of yourself if you're in a group. So I feel like really it's kind of a wash. They're pretty much equal. Yeah, maybe you identified with one of these cameras more than the other, but I would be happy to recommend either one of these cameras. The Canon puts an extra 300 bucks in your pocket. The Nikon, I think, is a little bit more camera and kind of you get what you pay for, but they're both good. Yeah. Sorry, so it's not more dramatic. Wish it could be more dramatic, but you really can't go wrong with either of them. I hope that you liked our review. If you do, please consider giving us a subscribe and liking the video and stay tuned for more of our reviews. Thanks, KEH. Thank Bye.